Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio, and today I have on the show Chris Levick. Chris, who are you? I'm not just a bartender, on okay. the internet at least. Oh, on the internet. Okay, yeah. I thought you were just not just a bartender. Okay, so is that a thing? Like, where are you? Um, so I'm on Instagram and TikTok. I make cocktail videos, and this is the Parmesan Espresso Martini done two ways. Awesome. So on this episode, we're going to try two different Parmesan espresso martinis. We're going to figure out which one we like best. Absolutely. Let's do it. Chris has made uh, an interesting cocktail. I hear it's delicious. I'm going to try it today. A little controversial. Uh, but Chris, it's great to have you on the show today. It's great to be here, man. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to make a, a drink that went pretty viral for me. Um, we took a classic that's obviously been very popular nowadays, taking an espresso martini. And I saw somebody shape Parmesan cheese over top. And in my mind, working in restaurants and in environments where we have kind of a culinary drive, mm -hmm. I thought that's got to work. <laughs> uh, so I decided to put a fun video together and it ended up doing really well. And there was a very polarized audience to, to know whether or not they actually enjoyed it, whether they thought the texture would be one thing with the shaved cheese or if they would love it. Because a lot of people love cheese. A lot of people love coffee and espresso martinis. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to kind of like dive in and, mm -hmm. and give that a whirl. So. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing it because on one end, I get it, right? Some nuttiness, some acidity, uh, some salt flavors. Yeah, you know, umami. Umami, all of those things are really good. But on the other side, I still have that Italian in me that says, Americans put Parmesan cheese on way too many things. <laughs> on the salad, you know, on the seafood. You know, it's like, we don't do that. And so I'm like, mmm, in an espresso martini? So <laughs> let's see what Honestly, you got. Honestly, in the comments, I got a lot of feedback from Italians <laughs> saying that I was- How dare you? I was committing blasphemy. Um, <laughs> so I get that. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I totally agree. And to some extent, I was uh, very, whoa, sorry about the spoiler. <laughs> I was very uh, surprised by the comments and the amount of people that also enjoyed it, though. Uh, so I know I was onto something. It wasn't like something that was a surprise overall. Right. So anyway, we're starting off with some espresso. Okay. We're gonna do some Mr. Black here. Okay. Very obviously, it's classic to use some kind of coffee liqueur. I really like Mr. Black though. It's a little bit lighter. It's not as like densely rich right. and sweet. Right. Um, but I am gonna pull in some of that richness with some Pedro Menes Sherry. So we're gonna tap into some of that Spanish side. Mm -hmm. But Pedro Menes has got a lot of great body to it, a little bit of savory nuttiness to it that I think will really help with connecting that cheese. Nice. You know? So just to, so you're making two, correct? Making two, I'm double batching it right now. Double batching. So what was the amount of each ingredient so far? So far, espresso uh, for the espresso was an ounce and a half. Gotcha. Um, I like to go a little heavier on the espresso so you get like a really nice fluffy head. So that um, means it's three quarters per. No, so that was an ounce and a half per. Per. So it's three ounces of espresso in here right now. So gotcha. sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about the- No, no, uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, one and a half. Okay, sounds yep. good. Then we got a full ounce of the Mr. Black. So we're going to split that half and half each. Nice. Same goes for the sherry. And then I'm going to go an ounce and a half each for Absolute Licks. Gotcha. Yes. Love it. Very cool. Now you were mentioning when we were talking on the phone that the espresso martini recipe, it can be, it can be any, right? It's not strict, uh, strictly this. No, it's true. Okay. I mean, I feel like you can use the espresso martini as a template, just like many other cocktails, good old fashioned, for example, and just sub in interesting ingredients in order to get different experiences with it. Mm -hmm. um, like I love rum espresso martinis. I love whiskey right. espresso martinis. And it's it's nice to try and sub in things like that so people who are not vodka drinkers can have an option and still have a very similar experience. Cool. So, yeah. Right. Uh, also going to throw in just a pinch of salt. Okay. Get that, that savory quality to it to keep jumping in the cocktail itself. So is the, the salt content of the cheese is not enough or? I just want to help connect some of that savory flavor more. I wouldn't say that cheese flavor isn't salty enough for sure, but to make sure the body of the cocktail has that connection as well. Gotcha. It's not a lot to like make it a savory cocktail from the start, but the bitterness, the sweetness helps all connect a lot better in my mind. Um, I love it. So yeah, throw a little bit of salt in there as well. Sweet. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice little froth on top. I like. 
Good shake will always help with that. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So obviously we're gonna do two versions. Okay, oh, okay. One with the shaved cheese, the original side. Okay, so this is the OG. OG. I like it. So we're doing it with a microplane so that the texture of it is as soft as it can get because it's super thin, but you still get like a really nice aromatic nose on top. And then... So that's good because if you use the green can, that dusty stuff won't really work. No, no, you absolutely have to shave it fresh. With a microplane is probably my preference because again, like you get those super mm -hmm. fine, thin yeah. shavings. And then I worked in a restaurant that had a lot of different foams to it. Mm -hmm. EDO, amazing restaurant. Um, they actually had a cheese foam that they use on pasta. It's not, a, that's not anything new. Uh, a lot of like boba tea spots use mm -hmm. cheese foams. Mm -hmm. So I found a recipe. This is the first time oh, okay. I'm trying to top it on a cocktail here. All right. So we're gonna do something new for me as well, which is kind of cool. First but, time on Master Your Glass. Yeah. You wanna spread a little in here first? Just yeah, sure of course. Yeah, it. she's great. Um, what's great about it is that the texture element where people were like, no way, I don't want the grit. Mm -hmm. This will be kind of a nice solution for that. I'll do it on like one, so you know what? <laughs> there we go. It actually looks cool. I mean, it's got, a, it's got an interesting texture to it. Yeah, it's super light, airy. Looks like whipped cream-ish, but yes. yes. Honestly, gonna... it's funny, I, when I worked out in the East Coast and we made espresso martinis, some people would request whipped cream on top, which I'm like, <laughs> fine. But now I'm making cheese foam, so I'm like, well, look at this full circle coming back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so may I try? Yes, I would definitely try that one first. Let's try the, the uh... OG first, right here. So this, we're gonna call it the, uh, uh, the classi classic, right? it's classic, like classic version cream. of it, yeah. It's a classic uh, Parmesan, Parmesan espresso martini, okay. Yep. Interesting. Very interesting. Because I'm the sweetness of the the cocktails really the aroma of the aromatics of the cocktail are popping and in between are layering in between the cheese. So you're not just getting the cheese, you're not just getting the cocktail, you're getting a cream cheese. I'm getting a cream cheese aroma. Mm -hmm. I would say there's Philadelphia cream cheese in this drink if I were blindfolded. Oh, well, you know what? I'm from Pennsylvania, so that might help. Mm. <laughs> Oh yeah, that works. That works. For all of you out there, it's not cheesy. Is, no. that, a, is that a, it's creamy. It's, it's, it's sweet, it's sweet cream cheese flavor to an espresso martini. Much different than what I thought it was gonna do. Yeah. Mm. And now I understand better why you were saying putting the salt in the drink because the two are somewhat separate, right? Yeah. And so they're connecting together. Gotcha. All right, I'll let you critique your own as well. Um, yeah, I could drink that. I could drink that. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. I like you. I could drink that a few times. And now this one here, huh? So this is the uh, revised or the, what are we gonna call this? This is the- uh, We're gonna have to work on- The reconstructed. It's delivery next time. Yeah, so it's yeah. a little bit less cloudy looking. Looks good to me. <laughs> the EF 2.0. <laughs> That's right. It's the Parmesan. Yeah. <laughs> P E M uh, <laughs> 2.0. Yeah. Okay, hold on. That went a little Bailey's on me. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way, but it went a little. I think the cheese pops more when you get that. Obviously, I, for me, like the sip of the espresso martini came through first, mm -hmm. and because of that, that whipped cream sort of effect on there, mm -hmm. it, it like dolloped on my tongue. And then when I got to swallow that next, and then it was savory cheese. Right. And it was. I feel like here you get the cheese like up front first because you take that, and it's maybe it's even more balanced to have it that way, just because like the impact of the cheese, like the impact of the cheese versus this where it's versus this where it's right, right, which is interesting. Very interesting. Let me take one more sip here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's really hard. 
they are different, obviously. They're not the same. But it's hard to pick a favorite because they are very, two, you know, really good versions of the drink. Um, I kind of like, I guess I, my, 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 my final my would be final this would one be here, but like you this said, one here, but like this one here, cream like cheese this one here, but like, uh, because this was the first time, because I, the cheese falling off my lip is kind of weird. But yeah, this is a really, really incredible drink. So you, you were, you're the man behind this drink, right? This was the, all the. So actually, no. There was a, there was a creator because obviously I, I create content, making cocktails, and I see different things online all the time. There was a guy, his, his account's called The Bitter Gringo. Okay, The Bitter um, Gringo. And he makes a lot of Shout cocktails. Shout out to The Bitter Gringo. Yeah, he's, he, he has an incredible account. He does a lot of things where he does enter his cocktail competitions. And his honestly, his cocktails that he show online are a lot, are pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I guess he was given a tip from somebody that connecting those savory elements with a sweet cocktail make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And he told him, why don't you just do the Parmesan cheese on an espresso martini? And he gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. It kind of circled in within like cocktail creators to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then all of a sudden it just lit like wildfire. I wanted to be a part of it. I decided to do my own video um, <laughs> because it's always nice to kind of like validate somebody somebody making that cocktail and, and putting it out there on the internet, hoping it's it's cool. Right. Um, and and truthfully, I like the moment I heard of it again. Like I was just like, man, I know this is gonna work. Like the savory qualities of that cheese are gonna connect with the sweetness, the bitterness of the espresso martini. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna really divide, I think, as much of the world as possible mm -hmm. on on, <laughs> on, a, on many different accounts. Not just like the flavor, but like Italians wondering why the hell you're shaving cheese on cheese an espresso right, martini right, right now. But yeah. it's really cool. And it's been a it's been a fun uh, like, I don't know, couple months now since it's gone viral to see like news stations pick it up, make it with, with a Bailey's martini and then choke it with cheese. It's just like, That's maybe you should ask me to come on, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just let me do it. Yeah. And what is your channel? What, my, my channel is not just the bartender, mm -hmm. um, which is fun because I, uh, I started it, I actually picked up the name for that account like five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a place where like I could, I could go and like speak to other bartenders about, you know, their, their career, but also like their life outside of work. Right. Um, because very often like service industry people are just looked at like you're just my server you're just my bartender or right. or even like when you're when you're going through that career someone's like so like are you going to school for something are you right, right. doing are something you else college? After? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what's next after this but in reality it's like there are plenty of us who just love to do this as as is mm -hmm. but there's just a whole different culture and, and mindset to it so like eventually one day I want to like go in that direction and start having conversations with people like while making cocktails, just like this it. actually. So, I love it. And it's yeah. important, right? One of my sayings is, is if bartending is all you know, then you don't know enough about bartending because yeah. you, your life can't just be all about that. It can't. But very, very cool. So the espresso martini, we were talking off the air before we jumped on the video here. So we were talking and the espresso martini is one of the most popular drinks in the world. Now, isn't that incredible, Chris? Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. Just a few years ago, nobody was drinking them, at least not uh, to this extent. Um, so um, it's great to have you. It's, it really is exciting to have you on this show to make a drink like this, again, four or five years ago, who would have ever thunk? And I remember back in the day, remember when you and I were, we did that Negroni Week launch at Sparrow and Wolf. Oh yeah, remember absolutely. that? That was like yeah. five or six years ago. I had the hat on and all mm -hmm. that. I just remember my Negroni was way better than yours. I don't, I don't know about that because I remember Tony came up to me and he said that his favorite was mine. So I, I mean, I, I get to... Tony. Tony's not a. I mean, Tony does not know enough about Negroni. You're crazy, you're crazy, man. Yeah, you know, he's the wrong guy for that. So why don't we do this? Why don't you and I meet up maybe in a couple of months, couple of weeks, whatever. Uh, we'll throw down, I'll make a Negroni, you make a Negroni. I don't even remember which one I made that time, so I'll make a new one, you make we a new one. Can. We just come up with whatever. Bring up some, bring in some judges and see who wins. 100%, let's do it. It's a challenge. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming on. I really uh, appreciate you, Chris, as always. It's really nice of you. Super popular channel. You should really go go check it out. Not just a bartender. That's correct. Uh, on, on what platforms are you on? TikTok and Instagram right now. Trying to do YouTube as well. TikTok and IG. That's great. Go check him out. But here on Master Glass, we talk about culture, we talk about tradition, and we talk about the drinks tied to them. So please come back. Thanks for watching.